Um, also, I want to say that while Dusty is very funny and he does, provide, of Johnny. He does <laughs> provide a source of entertainment, <laughs> I will say that Dusty is exactly the type of rookie that, that is the reason why the best <laughs> man ever happened. Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. We are back with a new episode of The Challenge. This is our review and recap of episodes two, no. <laughs> this is our review and recap of episodes three and four of season two of The Challenge of USA. Um, so yeah, so let's get right into it. And we're coming straight back from Tori and John A's elimination. Right. Uh, so basically, at the top of the episode, like you said, we are back from the elimination. Tori's in the house. Uh, we basically see a scene of Desi breaking down what they are naming the Secret Guardian Alliance, which basically includes uh, Desi, Chanel from the red team, Tiffany from the red team, both the listeners who are on the blue team, Michaela, which is a green team, and uh, Michelle, which is also another red team. Basically, she says that the rookies aren't afraid to take big shots this season, and their guns are strictly pointed at the veterans. Basically, they're just saying that, um, yeah, we we are not letting we're not playing the best games this season. Like we'll deal with Survivor Big Brother later, but right now we need to get those vests out. Yeah, I and I I agree with their like thinking. Um, or from their point of view, I agree with it. It makes total sense. Yeah, uh, so not too much happened in the house, so we can go straight to the daily challenge. Uh, this daily challenge is called Capsize, so essentially teams must swim to a boat, and then uh, they have to capsize the boat to reveal an answer key. Uh, one at a time, they must swim out to a set of buoys and grab a set of flags, and then once they collect all the flags, or while they're collecting their flags, they have to hang them up in the correct order that matches the answer key under the uh, boat, and then swim back to the dock. <laughs> Excuse me, swim back to the dock, and the one at the who has the fastest time basically wins the um, challenge. Yeah. Um, Did you like? This I one? thought this was a pretty good challenge. So, uh, red team red flag goes first, and. Kind of what they've been consistently doing. Uh, they have they don't do uh well. Basically, Tiffany struggles off the gate. She can't swim, and um, basically, um, Michelle when they are doing the memory part of it, Michelle misses uh some of the positions of the uh, flag order, so yeah. it pushes them back. What I don't understand is why. Don't they? If it was me, I would have did weakest swimmers first and faster swimmers and be like better swimmers last. That way we can eat up all the time in the beginning and then just like push through. If we know Tiffany bad, let her spend five minutes going to that buoy yeah. and then we can, you know, make it up with everybody else. Also, apparently, people can help them swim to the buoy. So TJ made it. Uh, clear that you must like each player has to go to the buoy has to go one. and get uh their puzzles, but I don't. I mean, I don't have a problem with it, but I also don't like the fact that people could help them like swim to it, like because yes. then I feel like that defeats the purpose of <laughs> like if Fessy, if Tiffany is on Fessy's back the whole time, even though they're not on the same team, but like if Tiffany is on Fessy's back and he basically swims over and all she's doing is grabbing. No, I don't think that's fair. <laughs> but. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah, it does add like an ele element to it. Like they, sh no, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> because like, if, if I have to do like, if think, you wanna... oh, go, ahead. go ahead. I was about to say, if it's a team challenge, then the team sphere, we still doing it as one team. So I don't think it's too bad. I get that, but don't make a, don't emphasize the point that everybody has to go when all I have to really do is just grab the piece. Yeah. Like yeah. so um basically uh so red team goes, uh blue team decides to do a little differently. They have Sebastian who works on the boat. So he's, he's like on jump. Yeah, they were able yeah, to jump like quickly. I already know how to uh capsize this. So 
yeah. to do this. And then they decide to, I don't know why they only had the girls do it, but they decide to divvy up the memorization part into quadrants. So basically only uh, each female only has to remember like five flags and essentially. Yeah. Um, so they can quicken their pace and minimize the amount of times they have to capsize the boat. I mean, it's smart, but I also don't understand why everybody, like you have enough people, everybody just remember two. Mm. Okay, okay. Like, you know, top two, bottom two, da da da, whatever the case may be. That way you're not trying to have four people memorize five pieces. Like, it just, I don't know, it just leaves more room for error, I guess, mm -hmm. when you have one person trying to memorize five different things, whereas everybody can just take two and then, you know, put it together. Definitely have, like, let's say Sebastian memorized one and two. Uh, you memorize three and four, da da da. So when I get my flags, oh, okay, this is five right here. This is seven right here. Da 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 da. I mean, that, I don't know. That's uh, it. Could have worked. Yeah. It could have worked. But <laughs> I like these challenges. Like I said, these challenges go by pretty fast. I was confused at first about like the rules, um, because you know he said they couldn't swim swim under the boat. Like yeah. instead, of, they have to capsize each time. Which I was like, this is a lot of work, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> but um no i thought it was a good challenge um it was it was different i don't know if it's something that i'd be like oh i hope they do it again uh, unfortunately the green team was this was not their forte yeah, it, wasn't the best um, it was just chaos <laughs> they were uh just flipping the boats um I mean, I don't think they really had a problem with the swimming. They didn't really emphasize the swimming part so much. It, it was just the, boat, the memorization. Getting all the, together, and, yeah. Yeah. Getting all the cards together. Yeah. So, moral of the story is, for this daily challenge, the blue team took it. Yeah. Uh, so, TJ reads the results. So, again, it was 20 flags they had to put in order. Green team surprisingly got 19. Blue and red had tied with 20 apiece. However, like you said, Blue Team was the one who got it done faster, so they are the ones safe from elimination. So we get to the nomination and voting of it all. Uh, so basically, as we say every season, Corey is at the bottom of the Beth Alliance, and he knows this. So it came down to, I believe, Amanda and Bananas was basically what everybody wanted to kind of uh, do. Well, okay, so Corey, Corey is saying like he doesn't want to. He's not. He's like I'm not sticking my neck out for Johnny Bananas or none of them. As Fessy say the same thing, but do we ever expect Fessy to to do that? No, I did not. But um, with Corey, I understand what he means because when he when they're playing in like the main season, you know he's not on their team and vice versa. Yeah. But again, this is the main season. When it comes down to the nitty gritty, Corey, these other people are going to consider you a vet in this game. So you can't. But really again, at the same token, if y'all consider me a vet, but don't treat me like one, why would I stick my neck? No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not talking about. Well, first of all, they're okay. <laughs> this could go all the way back to uh, years ago. Corey came. I know, in, lines, Corey it's came his fault. It's been years. It's been years. It's been many a challenge. Okay, I understand, but they are not just like in the main season. They were not just against him because I don't if know. Johnny can forgive he, West. It's no. no I understand. <laughs> I understand. But when Corey was a rookie, he came in there with the idea, "Let's get the vets out," and nobody was even thinking about none of this. And so, which I understand, but he was too vocal. We've already talked about this. He was telling everybody. <laughs> I'm getting the best out. I'm getting the best out. I'm getting the best out. And the best was like, oh, this new guy is trying to get all of us out. He's telling everybody. So ever since then, he's, you know, they always been against him or kind of against him or whatever, unless he had his 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 team of people around him. Um, but for this particular challenge, when you are grouped in with the vets, you going against the vets doesn't really help your game because no matter how much you help the rookies, they gonna still see you as a vet. When it came to it, every Everybody was pretty much voting the way it was supposed to, and it kind of like leaned towards uh Fessy and Corey. Although, I mean, I don't think it really mattered their votes anyway, it was already pretty much, yeah, it was already said, yeah, yeah. So, um, afterwards, 
uh, basically Amanda and uh, Bananas are the nominees. And Bananas decided to basically throw a temper tantrum and basically was like, it's unfair that I'm being targeted. Yeah, I didn't know. Because... That, was crazy. <laughs> that was so crazy. When he said, not, he was like, he literally said, he was like, never once have we only targeted one person. I was like, does Jay ring a bell? <laughs> for the madness ring a bell like what are we talking about yeah, man? Like, acting <laughs> like he just never won a challenge like you did 22 seasons you're a seven time champ you even said it at the beginning you played the most games you won the most uh finals like you think you're not going to be a target you think you're just going to finish the house <laughs> that's, that's really was they they were just, they were just saying nonsense at this point because when bananas would say they never singularly targeted one person and focused on them to get them out of the game it's crazy well i understand his frustration with them with other people you can't have no frustration because he's telling but them at the same time i feel like bananas don't have a right to be frustrated with fancy and Corey when historically bananas you haven't been on their side. I like, agree, but for played... this game, each game, you have to take each game by case-by-case case basis. And I agree with that. But when we're looking at the but overall... But at the same team, time, you can take it case-by-case. Case, but at the end of the day, I think that's what Corey did. He outweighed... Like, he could have stayed strong to the vet, but at the end of the day, he outweighed. They won't stay strong. They won't back me up well, if it I was think... me on the top of the box. I... <laughs> See, I don't know because I usually I will agree with that. Like, why are you have any loyalty to them? I agree. I really agree. And I think Johnny's whole speech was crazy. I don't agree with that. Yeah. But I agree with the lot. Plus, like I said, and like I said, even if Corey and Bethy didn't vote for bananas, they still want to win in. Well, like, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You won't vote for them and they still gonna go in. So just don't do it. You risking your game for something that don't even matter. I, I think Corey made the right move. Because at the end of the day, if they gun it for the advance and I'm playing along with them, that helps my game because they're not looking at me. They know I'm okay to like, like we can we can talk like listen like listen said. She came up to Corey and he's like I'm a, I'm listening like I, I he didn't say like I don't have allegiance to the vest, but he just like I'm open and it was like we don't have to like necessarily talk game or whatever. But are you open to like this? This is what we're trying to do. Da 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 da, and he's like. Okay, you know, I, I can play ball with this. Like, and then when it comes to it, you got your team supporting you because they're both on the blue team. You don't look like you're a snake. It's kind of like, you know, you gotta you gotta fall where the numbers lie. And Corey is on the side of the numbers right now. Like they like he's not like when it comes to like the secret garden alliance, Corey is not on their radar. By like just keeping low. I'm playing the ball with y'all. You know, I'm voting the way y'all doing. Remember, get all of them out first, and then I'm pretty sure, you know, he'll fall in somewhere later. But, but I, I feel like they even, like, the rookies or whatever you want to call them are still, like, pitting Josh on a higher pedestal than Corey. Like, Corey is not, like, the main focus. Like, there's still people above Corey. So if he just keeps, like, falling in the wayside, him and Fessy, I think, will not skate by, but, like, they always do kind of, like, just right in the middle before we get to the arena. So basically, they kind of wanted to get uh, Bananas out, so the house decides that it's either going to be Josh or probably has the best chances. I don't know why they picked Josh in that category, but um, Josh and Polly are the only ones. I think those are the people they considered out. expendable that weren't yeah. vets that they were willing to risk that were not vets. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, because Corey and Corey was on the blue team that won. Yeah, um, I understand and, Polly. I get Polly, but Josh, like I said, when you look at the elimination records, I would not. Yeah, Josh. they were just looking at people that were working with the vets that they could possibly put in. Yeah. And Polly is like I said, I, I get what they was doing, but in the grand scheme of things, Josh wouldn't have been. I would just focus on Polly and like making yeah. another guarantee. Yeah, guarantee thing. Um, um, but so yeah, we get to the arena where the uh secret votes are, <clears throat> excuse me are as follows. Josh gets two votes, Tyler gets three, Chanel gets one, Polly gets three, and Monty gets five. And then basically TJ pulls the name from the hopper, and Polly is the one who is um uh, picked to face off against bananas. Yeah. And um, so yeah, we finally get a bananas and Polly elimination. 
It's called Fire and Ice. And um, I was kind of confused. I wasn't confused, but essentially both players stand on a block of ice with one arm raised and the air and that arm is connected to a giant barrel, which is um, filled with fish guts. Uh, basically, if they move their arm by like lowering it or if it gets tired and it moves to a certain point, the barrel spills on them and they are essentially out. Um, but there's also another part where the players can throw bean bags uh, at the target, which basically connects to torches under their eyes. So if they hit the target, the fire turns off. But if they hit it again, it comes back. That's why I was confused that. Yeah, I um, think it turns off their fire too. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, so basically, once the fire is lit, it makes it harder for, for uh, them to uh, essentially um, stand. Um, because, it's not, because the ice is melting. Yeah. Um, it was pretty straightforward. They were yeah. pretty much hitting their targets. Um, we got all of them, except at the very last, uh, Johnny had did all 12 of his, and Paulie had done 11, and he was on his 12th beanbag because his fire was still on, and he threw the beanbag, and he ended up missing it, which means his fire did not turn off. So his yeah. ice is continually melting while his arm is up in the air, and Johnny's ice is not melting anymore, or like it's not actively like on fire, so it's not melting as fast. And so all Johnny really has to do is withstand Paulie's um uh, ice melting and he could win it and uh probably has tried to try his best and just hope that Johnny slips. Yeah. Um I feel like if I was them I would have spaced it out more. I don't I mean I get like oh, excuse me. I get throwing it uh back and forth to like cut off the fire, but I still would have kind of spaced it out a little bit. So that way if I was Polly like I see that Johnny has it, at least I have two or three left. To still be able to, like, you know, as a fallback instead of just one, you know, type of thing. Yeah. But yeah, so essentially, after a good 38 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes, I think, uh, Polly Barry, um, uh, unfortunately loses Oops, and his uh, barrels, um, uh, comes down and Banana is the victor. I do want to backtrack a little bit because, uh, Polly and Tori did have a conversation. Um, essentially, Polly came out, I guess, um, as this uh, queer. Uh, basically, he said he grew. He got in touch with his like sexuality because he felt like a lot of pressure, and that kind of affected his game in the past, where he was like, "I need to be like this manly man, this macho man, this type A, not type A, but like this, you know, all American job type of guy." And that's kind of he had a bunch of baggage. And yeah, I think this iteration of Polly was nice. I like this version of 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 uh, Polly and maybe really like Polly. I never like I know people have really like extreme like feelings about Polly, but I never really felt uh really strongly one way or the other. But this version of him, I really like who he is now. Um, it was very mature and like even when the first episode when he was on the boat and he hugged Josh. I was like, oh, okay, Polly. And so, yeah, oh, really, yeah, we, 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 yeah, we said that, girls. I, I really like Polly this season. I've never really, like I said, I've, I've never been a person that was one way or the other about Polly. But this season, I was on the positive side about him. We picked up at the top of the episode, Johnny is the winner, and he decides to defect to the blue team, switching his spots with Corey because he feel like Corey backstabbed him. Um... So yeah, so now Corey's on the red team and Johnny is on the blue team. And this episode, when I say heated, like I did not understand what people was doing. Like <laughs> this was the <laughs> yeah. kind of crazy. I don't think too much really happened um, yeah. at the top of the episode. It really just kind of went straight into the daily challenge. Uh, they did have like a scene where they showed uh like Desi talking about how like people have right, a lot right. of expectations on her um, and she's like just worried she won't live up to expectations because she puts a lot of pressure on herself and when they gave her this uh, <coughs> they, gave, they gave, did that spotlight on her I was like please no don't let Desi <laughs> leave because you know they, they usually spotlight people yeah. when they about to leave and I was like please don't let Desi 
he leave y'all yeah. um and but i i so yeah but yeah so she was being they gave her she was being really vulnerable in that scene um and then we get to the uh daily challenge yeah um i do want to say that i do appreciate desi because we know that she's a competitor and like like she said sometimes the pressure gets to you because everybody thinks you're like this competitor but you only like i'm not saying she's putting up a facade but it's like she kind of like gotta feed into it if that makes sense. Like she has to be this person that everybody expects her to be. Like kind of you know, or she feels like the pressure to like, oh, I have to win because everybody thinks that I'm gonna win, or I have to be like this super athlete because everybody thinks I'm this super athlete, and when I don't perform that way, it's kind of like defeating or whatever. And yeah, like that's kind of like you know what gets into like this uh, challenge. And I do want to say. I don't know if she said it this part or later on. Uh, oh, no, she said it in this part. She was like, this is the most stressful game that she played because last year she didn't feel like she was behind in the game. She felt like she was caught up. She felt like she was able to, like, assess the situation and know everything going around. And I feel like that's the problem with having challenge fest in this game yeah, because I it changes the dynamic of the game. Because I was about to say, it's not as I don't think it's as they're not able to last year, last like last season months. was yeah. last season was like they knew the challenge, but everybody at the end of the day was like friends. Like was too people was yeah. like it wasn't it was serious, but it wasn't like too serious. Like we weren't making backsided deals or backstabbing or like all this other stuff. It was like pretty straightforward. Everybody kind of knew what was going on. There was no like no hiding behind like people last year, people was like, This is what I'm gonna do, this is why I'm doing it. It is what it is, type of thing. This year is like, oh, they're talking about this. It's a secret alliance. The best trying to get us out. Now we got to worry about the best trying to like blow and rush, you know. But yeah, like yeah. I said, it changes the dynamic of everything. It makes it more stressful. <laughs> Let's get into this challenge because this, I don't, I don't know what's going on. But this challenge is called Side Swipe. Uh, basically, four players at a time will hang off a uh, side of a two uh, two double stacker trucks. Uh, they basically have to swing uh, from truck to truck, trying to stick tags of their color on the opposite uh, side. Um, based not, uh, of course, the trucks are moving uh, down the runway, and then TJ also lets them know that this, uh, excuse me, win is the most important because it's a double elimination, so the stakes are. Hi. Um, Green Team starts off pretty good. Wes is getting all his pieces. However, Amanda, I don't know what she did. The way she jumped off the she dropped, end, of, she yeah. dropped a bunch of our pieces. Uh, basically, just showing that, you know, she talks a lot, but uh, <laughs> she doesn't really uh, uh, step up to the plate when it's time to step up. Mm. Um, Basically, uh, the blue team quickly kind of like it's not even a race with the blue team, honestly. They were following and, us, yeah. Yeah, and so basically, it was a tie game, and then the blue team, uh, like we said, they were already pretty much out of the game, so they decide, thanks to Chris, to throw the challenge just so that green team don't win. And then, so when Bananas get up there, he literally does this, oh, oh, I am uh, dropped all my pieces. And then basically plays defense against Monty. So <laughs> and then, um, yeah, Monty's like, what's really going on? Because this is what we're doing. Because Monty was assigned. He's like, this is what I've been waiting for. This is what I signed up for. And then this is what you know you do. But Kayla, like, Kayla's my girl. She's like... <laughs> Ooh, she pulled Tori hair. Like, I'm gonna get out, get out of my way then. Yeah, she was, she was like, get out the way if you don't want that. <laughs> I um, so it's a good plan. Kayla, I this whole challenge, I was saying, Michaela Carey, because even when she was going against, I think Cassidy, Cassidy tried to do something to her, and she hit her with the whoop whoop with the bitch at the end. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but Kayla was in. No, was, yes, the green team was really. In a bag, they was really they and they should have won. won. But the challenge is not always about 
that yeah. like you get it's strategy as well and uh, you know hate that but the blue team had a good strategy like i know my people are on the red team so i know i won't be voted in save yeah. me i'll save you and we'll throw this challenge that uh, that has literally for as long as the challenge been day they, they've been doing stuff like that don't challenge like i said people. this was a move i pulled uh half a decade ago but i will say some of the vets um and i'm considering josh a vet at this point yeah, some of I'll just completely <laughs> unhinged in their thinking <laughs> because why do you think these people should not come after you he's like they're like they're doing all this coming after me like coming after people who should they come after themselves and that is the game that has always been played <laughs> is that yeah. the rookies just self-eliminate themselves basically and so josh is just like i can't believe they're doing this and it's all stupid what do you mean and so <laughs> but yeah yeah, that just the rationale of some of the vets is just like beyond. I don't understand it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't, especially when Josh, they weren't really, they like you're on their list, but you weren't on their list right now. Like you're doing all of this for what exactly? He and it's not, and they're not even targeting you. This is something they're doing to Banana, something they're doing to Tori. He has decided to work with the vet. These are his friends. These are people he <laughs> out, maybe yeah. he hang out with outside of the challenge because they're from the challenge and yeah. this season, which is why the vet should I be there to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I like I understand why you would want to work with him. I get what he's saying, but what I don't get is for you to be upset that I am not working with the vets, that I choose to work with the rookies, that I am a rookie that choose not to eliminate rookies. Make yeah. it make sense. <laughs> how like how you gonna get mad at me for playing my game? Like it's literally my game. They're if it bites me in the ass <laughs> or whatever, then yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I'll just be sitting there looking like maybe I don't understand the game. <laughs> <laughs> you do see the secret garden of Chanel, Michelle, Tiffany, yes. and um uh Desi and Michaela. Michaela, it was another red team girl, I think. I don't know. Uh, but basically, they were like, we're aiming for, uh, who was it? Uh, no, Amanda, it was, uh, Amanda, Amanda and, and uh, Amanda. Amanda and Wes. That's who they wanted. No, it wasn't Wes. It was Wes. Oh, yeah, it was West. It was West and Amanda. Yeah, that's who they were uh, voting for. So they all come in. they like, this is what we're going to do. So on and so forth. Because they already knew prior to going, it's pretty much going to be a stalemate, essentially. So they knew that the guys kind of wanted to go for Lewis and that they wanted to go for Lewis and Desi because they feel like they're the strongest people on the green team and kind of leading the team or whatever. And granted, they are. But, you know... <laughs> But you know, whatever. So we get to laugh this, at it because it is so crazy. <laughs> we get into this nomination, and my girl Chanel. Come on, Chanel, down. bring it back every season. <laughs> she, <laughs> said, she said, "Okay, I want to vote for Wes and Amanda." Um, and everybody pretty much go down the line: Wes and Amanda, Wes and Amanda. Then it was like Desi, uh, Lewis, da da da. And then all of a sudden, Josh is like, I'm not voting for Amanda. I'm not voting for Amanda. I'm voting for Desi. Why do I want to have uh, that or not? So Chanel's like, uh, she's like, do y'all want to run with, uh, do y'all want to run a final with uh, Desi? Do y'all want to run a final with Desi? And then she hit up with the, do you want to run a final with Amanda? Do you want to run a final with Amanda? Like if you're partnered with, with, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then Josh because he's like, yeah. whatever you say to me, I'm throwing it back at it you. It could be because... apply because literally he was given reasons, and the reasons apply against him as well. He said, like, Jesse <laughs> is their strongest person. Wes is their strongest person. Now what? Like, what are we yeah. talking about here? Yeah. <laughs> he's trying to make it make sense, but it don't make sense. But I will say, you can tell that Josh has played before. You yeah. can't play before about like you know your confidence and what you're about to do. If you're gonna go crazy, you gotta go <laughs> go big or go home. <laughs> go big or go home. <laughs> so he out crazy them into uh voting his way. And I yeah. just that's, he said that's what even you gotta before do the nominations, he said he would die 
on Miss Hill to have a stalemate. And Chanel said the same thing. She was like, I'm fine going in because I'm not voting for my girl. <laughs> And then, and yeah. Then, and then, and then Chanel did the smart thing. She was like, you know what? I'm a team player. Let's compromise. Compromise. You give us Amanda, we'll give you uh, Lewis, or uh, was it, uh, yeah, they was like, we'll compromise on Wes as long as you give us Amanda. Uh, and Jocelyn was like, no. Yeah, so it, doesn't, original, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, so the original vote was 3-3, three, three. and then out of, out of nowhere, Chanel was like, you know what, I'm still keeping my same vote. And then here go Tiffany and Michelle. Like, I don't want to say they're weak, but this was a weak move. Like, Tiffany, girl, it was like, you're crazy. And it was like, I hate that. I hate it. <laughs> this is where Desi was like, you know what, it is what it is, but what I'm going to do now is change this narrative and, you know, so basically, she lets everyone know, uh, the green team and basically her alliance members, that she wants Amanda. Um, however, when she uh, is meeting with the green team, she lets no, she West said know. she wants Amanda. She told them, she, oh, no, you, like she, when she meets the green, yeah, her alliance and the other green team members, she told them that she wanted Amanda. But when they actually met in front of West, she was like, I want Cassidy. Um, yeah. So basically, everybody was voting for Amanda besides Wes. Uh, and then, you know, basically a lot of them um, go. We do see that Michaela throws a road vote on Wes. Uh, I like what Michaela <laughs> said because she was like, so I, don't, I don't want to see you go, but. She's, I, she's I like, I don't want you to think you're safe either. <laughs> she's like, she's like, I, I want you to sweat a little bit. <laughs> yeah, she's like, we need West for our team. I don't necessarily want West to leave, but I want him to think he out here easy breezy. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no. she said, you're not an easy breezy beautiful bad bitch. You're going to sweat. <laughs> so you need to be a little worried. Like, who, who put that vote on me? So, yeah. I understand. Yeah, exactly. so, but yeah, I'm with Desi. Like, I was looking around side eye on all y'all because I don't trust yeah. none of y'all now. If I got half my my crew on this on this team in the dang on the uh vote nomination and somehow my name <laughs> <is>. <laughs> yeah. and then on the guy side Lewis said he wanted Monty honestly I would have no Dusty was on the red team so never mind I would have been like give me Dusty uh but I guess yeah. I would have had chosen <laughs> I would have had chosen Chris like but Dusty was on the red team so yeah it, it would have been Dusty for sure but like, like I would have chose if I had to go off blue Sebastian that would have been his best bet, honestly. Um, definitely on something physical, but so they get to the arena and these are the votes. Tyler gets three, Sebastian get one, uh, West gets two, Monty gets two, Bananas get one, Chris gets six votes, Michaela get four, Cassidy gets two, and West is like, wait. And then Amanda shows up on the board and she has nine um, votes <laughs> this elimination is basically the pole wrestle yeah um it's called evil eye where the opponents must start at the center of the arena holding onto a disc i don't know why they had it hanging up if they were just gonna pull it down and then have them on the ground i thought they yeah. had to like, like jump for it and then wrestle you know or whatever that would have gave it a little bit more you know oomph. but um the goal is to get the object out of the selected arena area before um, his or her competitor and the man off of first. Um, I mean, it was a pretty good fight. Chris said he's a footballer or he played football in the past. And then, you know, Luis is a firefighter. So, you know, he deals with this type of uh, stuff uh, on the regular. Uh, but Chris comes out on top, uh, defeating Luis. I was uh, kind of sad to see Luis go. Actually, I uh, like him. I want to see him back. I think he's a good, uh, refreshing taste for the challenge he has a uh, franchise player material yeah i like lewis i think he wasn't like scared of the vets he was ready to play even when they sent to me and he wasn't like like super mad about it he was just like i'm here yeah. to do what i gotta do to try to win it so i like him. yeah and he had a good social game he had a good he played the politics well he uh, done I hope well to see him on the official main season yeah. uh, i think he's better I think he would have done better if it was a brand new game. Yeah, um, I want to see him on game a... with all new people. Lewis would have not have started off 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, he would have done yeah. good people that was just all new. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Let's get to so, Desi and Amanda. Yeah, so we get to Desi and Amanda. Uh, surprisingly, Amanda puts up a tough fight. But I feel like if he's Paul Russell elimination, I mean, once you really get, like, lay on it, I mean, you're pretty good for the most part. It's just really up to the other person to kind of push through and persevere and kind of, you know, um, get it off the top of you. So, I mean, I don't think Amanda, like I said, she did do a good job for what it's worth, but I don't think Amanda would have ever beat Desi or something like this. Yeah, Amanda held out longer than I thought, but, you know, I did have my money on Desi, um, but um, I am glad that Desi won. I do like Amanda, um, but I am glad that Desi won. So Chris decides to <laughs> return to the blue team because he said that's where his friends are. Little does he know once again that the blue team, like Tori and Chris are convinced the blue team is on their side when they are the main ones voting against them. <laughs> so it's, it's mind-blowing. Um, but Desi also decides to join the blue team. And although I don't think she should have defected, but she was smart for defecting because, like she said, join the team that are, is trying to get rid of you. <laughs> like, you can't get rid, of trying to get rid of you, but... I mean, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But I also think she... Like, I think she had a strong... I mean, granted, Lewis was, like, a good guy to have. But now that they got rid of Amanda, I think they would have had a, a strong team. Um, but so, the, the thing about it is, if too many people leave the green team, we're going to mix it up anyways. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going to do a reshuffle. Yeah, they're going to reshuffle. turn into, like, two big teams and yeah. then solo. But, yeah, it's going to be another uh, shuffle. Uh, but... Uh, we do end the episode with them, you know, defecting. Uh, she does take Alyssa S spot off the blue team, and uh, Alyssa S is on the uh, green team. Wes does say they just lost their strongest male and female, so he uh, is kind of, you know, worried, and now he's thinking about taking charge of the green team. Yeah, so it was a pr- I think it was a pretty good episode. Yeah, I just don't think everybody's playing the same game and I don't think everybody is uh, in their right mind. I think some people are a little delulu, but <laughs> you know, that's what happens when you uh, you know, play this game, I guess. Please like and subscribe. Let us know what you thought of the episode. <laughs> Leave a comment down below and we will see you on our next video. Peace. Peace.